could actually trace images and create your own inlays really, really, really easy. But look at that, and it's really durable. Right, we are back with another experiment. So this one, if you remember, we did the swipe and wipe with baby lotion, where we created this inlay effect with the baby lotion in our mold and a stencil. Now, the only issue with that is that we couldn't color the lotion. So out comes this idea. So this is a trial run I did last night. And don't do this on greaseproof paper because the silicon sticks, so it was a fail, but I'm halfway there. So this was just using Let's Resin silicon rubber liquid, but we have to thicken it. Now you're probably thinking, oh, out comes the cornstarch. <laughs> no, this is a product called Polytech Polyfiber. And what this does is it allows us to thicken our silica mix so pause it there if you need to I've got my mask at the ready the mask I think is only essential when you're actually taking the, the powder from the bag because it's a very fine fiber but I will be adding it to either part A or part B to thicken it first before merging the two liquids together but that will allow us to thicken the silicon to be able to use it to make silicon inlays like this but it was an experiment and it failed but this time I've got a sheet of just some black acrylic that I'm gonna try so I should be able to just peel it off right so the stencils we're limited with the stencils let me explain why most of you it's, it's not it's not rocket science <laughs> but with some of the lettering if I was to you know that's gonna create two sections of silicon that was gonna be really really fiddly I mean we're quite limited with what we can do but some details and some stencils we can actually do in one go one swipe like this for example I mean something like this would be an absolute pain because we had have all those little sections we'd need to peel off and put inside our mold and I've never really made an inlay before so don't judge me, but I will take some helpful tips in the comments from the pros out there if you're watching. <laughs> so I've just got the Let's Resin Silicon Rubber kit. I mean, I think they've changed the packaging since I got this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna measure out 2.5 mil of part A in this mixing cup. Then I'm gonna add the powder. And then to save on my mixing cups, I'm gonna just add the extra 2.5 mil to the same cup after it's mixed and we are in voiceover mode <laughs> so i'm just using quarter teaspoon measurements and i'm just adding two to this part a now i'm not flattening these out i'm just chucking them in there so just bear that in mind you're just going to have to adjust it if you use this stuff and just stir it slowly because you don't want the little bubbles of powder to kind of puff and make a bit of a mess so just you really do need to mix this stuff in though and you can see after some time, this was after about two minutes of mixing, there's still some little bobbly bits. So just keep mixing until it's, it's, it's no longer visible. Okay, so I'm now adding the 2.5 of part B. My idea wouldn't have worked because I couldn't really see. It's not self-leveling because it's so thick. So I'm now just going to mix those fully. Same as what you do with your epoxy, scrape the inside as you're mixing, and we should be left with a paste. Okay, it's not as thick as it was when I did the trial run last night. I think because I added the powder to part A and part B once they were mixed, I didn't add them to just part A. So I'm gonna have to add another scoop and just hope that it works. So you can see that's not even a full quarter teaspoon measurement. And I'm just, again, just mixing that in very, very thoroughly. Okay, so what we're going to be left with is a consistency that's not going to self-level on us and create a mess. So that is now swipeable. So all I'm going to do now is just make some random bits, I think. I'll start with this snowflake, just apply some. And then again, with our plastic card, we're just going to swipe over to take off any of the excess. So... 
as mentioned, just swipe off that excess and then carefully lift away the stencil. Black acrylic is probably not the best thing to use. It is sliding. And there we go. Okay, just uh, a little bit of a brainwave. So I did uh, a dragonfly. And you can just join the silicon together like that. So if you're using a stencil with words, there's your answer. <laughs> and the same goes for adding detail. If you wanted to, you could add small detail, say to the wings or whatever you want. Okay, so you can see I've done a few. I actually did a freehand hot air balloon. So what I'm now thinking is if you was to replace this with a clear piece or some glass, make sure it's not sharp around the edges, you could actually trace images and create your own inlays really, really, really easy. But we need to see how strong they are. So I did some test patches and they are really strong. So you can see from this one, it went a bit weird around the, the horns. But they are super thin and they come off. Look, I can just peel that. So you want to store this correctly so it doesn't collect any dirt. But look at that, and it's really durable. And you can see on this tree here, I just did some kind of snow detail. Just freehanded it really. So you can you can make them thicker by just applying more over the surface. Whether it's still wet or dry, I presume that you could you could go over this when it's dry and create an even more 3D effect. The only thing is you do need to mix, mix, mix. I think what the issue is, what I had, I mean it's not a bad thing because it's added texture, but where I added that extra scoop after I'd combined the two, I've got these t tiny little kind of bubbles, but I'm not really worried about that. See if I can just peel it off in one go just from that bit that I've just peeled without snapping it. So it comes away so easy. Super thin. You can see some tiny bits of silicon has kind of come over the edges. But with it's it's because it's so small as well, but with bigger things like this, what you could do is just use a craft knife and just sharpen the edges if you wanted to. But be sure that you're doing it on a, a surface like maybe glass, so it's not gonna scratch the perspex because we wanna use this again and again and again. But look at that. New way to inlay and you can, uh, sticky. It's, well, it's not sticky, it's just the silicon. <laughs> But you could, there's so many possibilities for this. With different stencils, it just wants to cling to itself. And they're transparent enough, I think, to work with UV resin. So we're going to give it a quick bash as well. Get it off. So definitely with things like this, I think making it thicker after we've done the stencil would probably be a better option to stop it from being so fragile. So just a trial one with the UV, I'm just going to fill this up and then take one of my little snowflakes and rest that on top. Just straighten out that top bit otherwise it's going to sink. That's better. <laughs> and just position that where I want it and then give that a couple of minutes under my light. Okay, it is time to see. Oh, look at that. Easy peasy. Just put in one go. And there we have it. It works. And what I would do to store these is probably kind of sandwich them in between two sheets of clear plastic just to keep them clean and protected. Again, the details aren't going to be perfect see it's there not as much detail as I'd like but it's a start isn't it I'm gonna pop that back in and finish it off 
with some of my frost paint. Just put a drop in the middle and hopefully that will create a snowflake effect. Just spread that out into the branches of the snowflake and just let leave that and let that do its thing. And we'll check on this shortly. Hopefully it will work. And for anyone new, it is the Vallejo Game Color Special Effects Frost. Make sure it's frost, not snow. And there you can see it transforming already because the UV resin is still warm. So it is beginning to frost up almost instantly. Can you see that? We'll come back to it. Again, I don't know much about inlays. I, I don't really use them, but what you could do is color your inlays, put them inside your mold, and then pour your resin over the top. And that would then transfer the color from these onto your resin. So just to test the color out, I know it's gonna work. I'm just gonna make a mess, because why not? <laughs> And that was just a crimson from the Let's Resin 36 mica set. So I'm just going to pour out my two part epoxy. Lots of bubbles, ignore that. I'm just going to wait and let those rise. So, just as a trial run, I've actually managed to get that one inside the mold and poured the resin over the top. So, with this one, I just need to do the same as what I did with the snowflake and just get this heart positioned perfectly, floating on the back of my epoxy. I'm trying to balance it on my dotting tool. No, it's the wrong way round. <laughs> I forgot that part. There we go. Please stay. There we go, there we go. And then we just position that also. Right, I'll see you for the next bit. Okay, so it's not all about this anyway, it's just to see if it worked. So the snowflake went a little bit weird where i added white alcohol ink to it i kind of made a mess so i didn't really finish it properly i might save that for a, for another video there you go let's see these i'm not sure if this is a good idea or not you know let me know in the comments you see all those bubbles where i just it's not about that though it's about whether these inlays are working there you go it's stained it a little bit but I don't think that will matter really for a different project I think that the best thing about this experiment is the fact that we can build our own like I mentioned if you use like a transparent sheet you could freehand or trace kind of any inlay you want to make it does transfer it's not going to come off you'd back that with a black or a white just to make that pop look at those bubbles <laughs> and the last one as always give the video a thumbs up drop me a comment if you haven't subbed hit that button for me let me know what you would do with this can i get it off without tearing it bit of resin seep there. It's really strong. I think that powder has actually strengthened the silicon because I was thinking you could, another alternative, you could stick your stencil onto like a, an adhesive plastic like this stuff and then pour your liquid silicon in but I just think it's easier to just swipe the design. So it does work. I just need to play around with the, the sharpness. I think maybe once it's done, if we were to use the tool and just take away any dodgy areas, but it's gonna be time consuming. All right, it's something to play around with. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now. Just quickly, going back to the idea that I just said about sticking this to plastic and then pouring it in, that would be impossible with something like this. So maybe it's a good thing. I don't know.